Year 13, The Second Rule of Mariguana. First of Granite, 1063, Early Spring. I introduced myself to the people of Boat Murder today and put on my best tough guy facade. You know, threatened a few people with death here, demanding absolute obedience there. Really, I'm not at all like that, but I don't think they would listen to me unless they feared me. And it's better to be feared than loved. That's a little something I learned in Nikoto Momuziavelli's The Overlord. There are so many problems with boat murder that I don't even know how to begin reversing the cycle of decay. The first thing I noticed was the smell, and I don't know what to say about it. It's it's like an elephant's ass. Then I saw the bones and the rotting pieces of flesh that children kick around in the streets, and the nightmare scenes carved into the walls of dwarves and animals streaming of monsters gorging upon children in lumps and, and, and things I never want to speak of. It's as if the dwarves of Boat Murdered have lost all hope. I don't know what to do for these people, or if, indeed, there is anything that can be done for them. For now, I've ordered them to move these piles of goblin equipment to the Magma River to be melted. By the gods, how many legions of goblins have died before the gates of Boat murdered? Fifth of Granite, 1063, Early Spring. I woke up in a pile of garbage outside of my room. I think I drank too much. Or maybe I was knocked out and placed there to die. I'm not sure. I'm irritated to note that in the past four days, not one piece of goblin armor has been moved to the armor stockpile I've designated in the back end of the fortress. I decided to investigate the problem, and found that of the 72 dwarves currently living in the fortress, 22 are nobility, 4 are children, 6 are employed in the military, note this will need to be increased later, 5 have wounds that leave them unfit for work, and a dozen more were partying. Something had to give. I regret that it had to come to this, but for now, there will be no partying in boat murdered. I hope none of the men will be terribly upset by the decision. Today I also notice that the fortress is sorely lacking in bins. Not wanting to send any of my already scant workforce out into the wild to cut down trees, I ordered the production of some metal bins, and was horrified to find that the only dwarf who knows his way around the forge is currently in jail. I think I understand now why my predecessors left this place in such a mess. 20th of Granite, 1063, Early Spring. The elves have arrived, diary. Their meddling is the last thing poor, struggling boat murder needs. Why should we help them? The elves have done nothing for the dwarves but waste our time with their moronic little demands. The elven diplomat is here, and unsurprisingly, she thinks she can boss us dwarves around. Who the hell does she think she is? My gut tells me I should have her strapped to a boulder and lobbed over the horizon. My gut tells me that I should fell every tree in the forest, set fire to the grasses, and... Gods! Everything about her makes me angry. And yet, part of me recognizes the need for good relations with these fools. What should I do? 28th of Granite. I fear that I've made a terrible mistake. I told her that her demands were reasonable. And she insulted our kind twice more and then left. What would our ancestors have done? They'd have killed the bitch, that's what. Nobody as offensive, rude, and presumptuous as the elves should be allowed to live. While the diplomat escaped my wrath, the elven merchants are still here, and so are the trees that these fools are so concerned about. There's a storm coming, Lema Saralisei. Now that the merchants are dispersed, Disposed of, I'll ensure that not one tree or shrub grows outside of Boat Murdered. 25th of Slate, 1063, Mid-Spring. In the Dwarven Tongue, there is no word for forgiveness. Every single tree on the map has been marked for cutting. 1st of Felsite, 1063, Late Spring. Diary, I regret to write that our DeForesters are having... difficulties. Some of the men are allergic to the sun and can only walk so far before they become sickly and crawl back towards the fort, leaving trails of vomit in their wake. 
other dwarves were ambushed by elephants in the southern parts of the forest, where the magma could not reach. Goes without saying that the casualties were high. Two dwarves died and others were wounded and had to be dragged back to camp. I've ordered the men to leave Elephant and Grove alone, at least for the time being. Six of Felsite, 1063, late spring. There's a dwarf among us who calls himself Emperor Sankus, the impudence of it. By my official decree, he's been renamed Sankus the Beardless. Wait until the men hear about this. Eh. Gorilla Medic posted, Oh God, you slaughtered the merchants? And are you going to leave me to deal with the invasion? I do love the smell of burning elf in the morning. I might drown them for a change. If I can convince my dwarves not to get crazy and make themselves thongs out of each other. Twelfth of Hematite, 1063, early summer. Today the bridge to the elephants was completed. Oh, how they will rue the day that they opposed boat murdered. Ah, sweet magma. Thirteenth of Hematite. A human merchant prince from Okuman has arrived. Oh god, oh oh god, what have I done? It's too late to stop the magma now. Ancestors, help me. So many, diary. So, so many. Their blood is on my hands, and I can do naught to save them. The guildmaster Astodoglaltur meets with the human merchant prince Vispal Ijamlan. Vispal says, On behalf of the Merchant's Guild, let me extend greetings to your people. There is much to discuss. <laughs> uh, yes, fool, yes. You have no idea how right you are. The wagons slowly approach the fortress, only to find an encroaching sea of magma. Death, the voice of death, calls to you, humans. The wagons are consumed in the magma, and smoke billows up. Goblins? Here? Now? <laughs> A goblin siege arrives into the magma. Oh, damnation, the flow cannot pass over the bridge. I need to consult with my engineers. Mystic Mongol posted, You need an aqueduct. The aqueduct needs to be made of stone. You just murdered dozens of our best trading partners. You bastard! You could also dig a new channel down south so we could flood whichever hemisphere angered us. Mariguana posted, 24th of Hematite, 1063. I can touch you now. The magma flows over the river, and the elephants are consumed. Fourth of Malachite, 1063, Midsummer. Our revenge is fulfilled. Now let the elves come and know our steel. Boat murdered is now an ashen waste. All the trees have been cut down. Every single patch of grass, every single bush, has been burned to ash. Dr. Zero posted, Well, Samuel, we're finally at Boat Murdered. Why do they call it that? It has some dwarven meaning. Don't fret, they're really only hostile to goblins. They've always treated us fairly and with respect. Oh, look out, elephants! Um, why are the elephants running away? Huh, that is strange. Oh, and there's some dwarves. They're waving. Huh, they look kind of agitated. They're shouting and pointing, but I can't make out what they're... Wh wh why they've just... Ducked to the doors and slammed them shut. What's going on? Huh, what's that smell? It's like sulfur. Oh, gods, it's lava. Run, run, get away. Turn the wagons around. Ah, it burns. Ninth of Sandstone, mid-autumn. Oh, God, not again. The magma's already flooding and my kinsmen are going to die. A dwarven caravan from Kinmel Bill has arrived. Eh, <laughs> just, just kidding. That was a good joke, wasn't it, Diary? The magma is perfectly safe in its channel. The dwarves from Kinmel Bill brought us a lot of meat today. We're glad to take some old goblin equipment as payment. 
Uh, the human diplomat just arrived. I wonder what he'll want to talk about. The Count Likot Zuglarvod meets with the human diplomat Wimod Onyekpenok. Wimod says, Greetings, noble dwarf. There is much to discuss. Ah, uh, why, uh, thank you. Just, uh, don't look at the walls. Wimod says, It's such a pleasant place you've carved out for yourself. Oh, uh, he's already leaving. Huh. Whatever problem we have with the humans are for the next leader of Boat Murder to deal with. 15th of Sandstone, mid-autumn. Although nothing major's happened since the coming of the human diplomat, there were some minor events that I felt would be worthy to record, diary. An injured peasant is moping around the fortress and refusing to eat. I think we can all agree that this is for the best. Some fool of a trapper tried to club a leopard with his crossbow, with obvious results. The dead trapper's war dog charged after the leopard, seeking revenge for the loss of its master. Its body was almost instantaneously broken by the larger cat. Although I had written the dog off as dead, it was making quite the comeback. The war dog bit down on the leopard's stomach and shook violently, ripping the beast in twain. The dwarves of the fortress were inspired by the dog's heroic victory, and they have nicknamed it Lizard Cudgel, which I don't know what lizards or cultures have to do with anything. I'm nonetheless swelling with pride to have such a courageous animal counted among the denizens of my fortress. 16th of Sandstone, 1063, Mid-Autumn. Sankus! Oh god, did you have to name it the Green Grave of Biles, too? Omerandul Erang, the Green Grave of Biles. Engraved on the floor is an exceptionally designed image of a human by Sankis the Beardless Gatton Bomrek. The human is burning. 20th of Sandstone, Mid-Autumn. I've begun the construction of a monument so that my people will have something to remember me by. 7th of Moonstone, Early Winter. Work on the monument is progressing too slowly. Although I have assigned nearly every dwarf in the fortress to this task, I fear the monument may not be completed in time. 19th of Moonstone, Early Winter. Oh, damnation! I had to pull the dwarves inside and scorch the world. Work on the monument is enormously set back. Goblins are swarming the monument. 20th of Moonstone, 1063, Early Winter. Uh-oh... The impertinent magma has defaced a Sankis the Beardless Gattenbomrick masterpiece. Sankis? Buddy? I'm sorry about the beard comment. Think you could calm down a little? Sankis the Beardless is throwing a tantrum. She is ultra-mighty, perfectly agile, and super-dwarvenly tough. She is a master in multiple skills. Kyer posted, I bet if Sankus ever dies, he explodes in an enormous detonation that'll take out a large part of the mountain with it. Water will pool in the crater in the years afterwards, and it will be remembered as the watery crater tomb of Sankus. Gorilla Medic posted, At that state, and armed with an axe, he could possibly kill the whole fortress. I want to see elephants versus Sankus. Draft him. Oh, and I'll have your support if I start killing off the more useless nobles. I mean, do the house whatever nobles do anything else than demand silly things? Sank has posted, Exactly! What better way to end the fortress than the god emperor going on a rampage? Then the next player, if they so desired, could reclaim it. 24th of Moonstone, early winter. The flood of magma last winter set alight a catapult in the ramparts of our fortress. It's created a smoke cloud that has lasted for weeks, causing dwarves to choke on it and driving them utterly mad. 25th of Moonstone, early winter. Oh my god, Sankus is on a bloody rampage. He mauled a baby and a cow, and now at this very instant he's beating the elite Marks dwarf Cato Locum out into paste. And did I mention that he is on fucking FIRE! Oh dear god, Sankas, just, just let him die. You don't need to break every part of his body. Oh my god, Sankas beat the elite Marks Dwarf until he finally died from being on fire. In fact, he beat him so long that the elite Marks Dwarf also caught on fire and died shortly after. 
Zoe posted, He's on fire. Oh, no wonder he's pissed. The only question is who will take over the task of carving a record of these wonderful events into the walls and floors for posterity. Edit. Oh, he's dead now. Fare thee well, Sankus. The fortress will never be the same without you. Letterface posted, This is one of those moments that makes Boat murdered what it is. Extermination of armies, gruesome engravings, and insane superpowered dwarf wizards gone on a mad rampage while on fire. This is Boat murdered. First of Opal, Midwinter. The carnage didn't stop with the death of Sankus. More and more dwarves are tantruming, and fighting is near constant in the streets. There are only five nobles left alive now. Why? Because nobles are goddamn weak. If you've got to bet on ten tantruming nobles or a goddamn swordmaster, the choice is clear. Bear Teethlethabon, Baron, has bled to death. Oh god, I've never seen a child so miserable. Ablel Imoru, Ablel East Pages, Baby. Ablel Imoru has been miserable lately. She has lost a father to tragedy recently. She has witnessed death. She choked on smoke underground lately. She was caught in the rain recently. She has been accosted by terrible vermin. She likes diorite, bronze, ruby, turtle shell, crossbows, rings, dogs for their loyalty, and plump helmets for their truly rounded tops. When possible, she prefers to consume hoary marmot. She absolutely detests rats. She needs alcohol to get through the working day, and really wants a drink. Fourth of Opal, Midwinter. Mandrills! They're attacking! They snuck through the smoke! Fourteenth of Opal, Midwinter. No matter what I do, they just won't stop dying! There are now thirty-nine living dwarves in boat murdered, of whom ten are injured, two are jailed, and several are insane! At least the smoke and miasma make it difficult to see the burning bodies and pool of blood mixed into vomit. Sankus posted, So what exactly started the whole unrest? Was it Sankus, or was he simply another byproduct of a larger cause? The last lava flow? Mariguana posted, Is the smoke. There's a permanent cloud of it driving everybody mad. It makes everybody just an inch from snapping, so if the tiniest little thing goes wrong, someone is going to go berserk. And when that berserk dwarf kills another dwarf's baby, the father goes berserk and kills a cow. And that causes the cow lady to go mad and break the well. And so on and so on until everybody is mad. Even now, dwarves on their sick beds at the barracks are beginning to rip each other apart. 21st of Opal, Midwinter. I tried to order the dwarves to close the gates to keep more smoke and fire from getting in, but there is a burning corpse in the way, keeping the northern gate wide open. None of the dwarves seem like they want to move it either. 28th of Opal, Midwinter. Only 29 dwarves live now, but I will not let my reign be known as a total failure. Every dwarf who can stand is working single-mindedly on my monument. I will finish it. 23rd of Obsidian, Late Winter. At last, the smoke is rising, and the cycle of death and boat murdered is coming to an end. The population of the fortress seems to have stabilized at 27 dwarves, with the last death occurring a little over two weeks ago. Happy fucking New Year's, you poor bastards. Almost everybody in Boat Murdered is dead. Those who aren't are either insane or hopelessly overworked. My condolences to whoever governs Boat Murdered next, because you have your work cut out for you. Just how bad is fucking Boat Murdered doing? Take a look. And my monument? Yeah, I, I finished it. I meant to make half of a goddamn lizard, and nobody will say otherwise if they know what's good for them. Zarf posted, At this point, we've somehow managed to create the root of evil in the dwarven universe. Here's what it must look like from the mountain homes. 1. Dwarves go to boat murdered and disappear. 2. Lava comes out of boat murdered and destroys the surrounding environment no less than three times a year. 
3. A maniacal dwarven supervillain comes out of Boat Murdered and goes on a killing spree. Shit, there are probably entire fucking sagas that are being sung about the evil fortress of damnation known as Boat Murdered. Amused Frog posted, The immigrants coming now are actually adventuring parties. They just get drafted as soon as they appear on the horizon. Wow, you people actually live here. We were expecting demons. What are you talking about, new metalsmith? Go to the forge. I'm an adventurer. We've got another crazy. Shove him outside and seal the doors. Hey, get off of me, you tricks. Well, anyway, uh, oh, I'm melted.